So what we want to do is create an opportunity to fix or change. We want to be a, in, in, an innovator, find a new path, and have a new direction. So in our business and our personal life, to create innov innovation, one of the things that I have found is that we really have to challenge our own assumptions. Now, challenging our assumptions can be tough because most of the time we don't even realize that we have assumptions. But one of the most important and powerful things that we can as individual and business owners do is to stop and challenge all assumptions. Put it to the test. Think about different opportunities. Allow yourself the opportunity to be inventive by challenging your own assumptions. I had a chance not long ago to take a class. It was called um, it was called a critical thinking class. Now, I signed up for it because who wouldn't want to take a class that was all about critical thinking, right? My assumption was I was going to get to learn how to strategically plan and think and, and you know, to use use my, my knowledge and become a better thinker. What I found out when I read the synopsis on the class was, what we want to do is help you think outside of the box, which is a term that I think was used a little too much these days. You know, I'm not really a box thinker. I'm more of a circle thinker. I kind of tend to think we do things over and over and over again. So use whatever you want to do. If you're a box thinker, that works. If you're a circle thinker like me, that'll work too. But it was it talked about challenging how you view everyday things, how you view problems. How do you actually move forward and give yourself the opportunity to be inventive and think of something new? So we had to do this exercise. And the exercise they had us do was close our eyes and imagine a glass of water, a clear, cool glass of water sitting on a stand. And this glass of water is filled to the halfway mark. And as you're looking at that, you're thinking, am I a positive or am I a negative thinker? Okay? So we all start imagining that glass of water. We start thinking about how do I view things. And before long, we all start having these discussions about I'm a positive thinker, I'm a negative thinker. You know, which one's right, which one's wrong. And somewhere along the way, we stop thinking about what we were actually in the class for. What was it that I said we went into? To think outside of the box, think outside of the circle. We made an assumption. We made the assumption there could only be two choices. It could either be I'm a positive thinker or I'm a negative thinker. Well, then they instructed us and let us know that, you know what? There's another way to look at this. You don't have to look at the glass as half full. You don't have to look at the glass as half empty. What if we looked at it this way? There's enough water in that glass that I can take a drink and then I can walk over to the sink and fill it back up. It's just a different way of thinking. And it made me stop and realize that in a lot of different ways in life, we have to challenge our assumptions. We sat there with the assumption that we had to choose positive or negative. And when we assumed that, we stopped looking for choices. All right? Well, there are other choices, other opportunities, and other ways to view all the different situations. And we can open our mind when we powerfully challenge our assumptions and start thinking innovatively. So I had um, thought a lot about that, about assumptions and challenging those assumptions and innovative thinking. And I noticed that when, I don't know, maybe you've noticed this too, but when you're reading something or you hear a word or something, it seems like all of a sudden it just starts popping up everywhere that you look. And I was 
reading some articles recently about our economic um, situation that we're in, our, the economic uh, position. You know, I was reading this one specific article that was talking about businesses, banks, and the 2008 crisis and where are we today. And I started noticing that all throughout the article, they, they started talking about innovation, okay? What this has done is created an innovative way for us to, to build a new path and have businesses and banking and our economy come together in a way that maybe we hadn't thought of before. So it also went on to talk about the fact that we have to challenge the assumption that there's no lendable money out there. You know, what, what is out there, what can we do, and how do we go and find it? Well, one of the ways for you is to attend events like this. Make sure that you talk with the BBC representatives. Find out what opportunities are out there. There are a lot of different ways that you can be an inventor and think of ways to start these new adventures that you are all looking to, to take care of and to be part of and to be part of the economic growth and to be part of the new, what we're calling now, I guess, the new real economy and, and move your own box, circle, into a totally different path, a totally different, uh, a totally different pathway. And I lost myself in my notes, so I apologize for that. But there were some stats that I did want to review, which was in helping challenging um, the assumptions, and I was reading this in those economic newsletters, that there is lendable money out there. You know, um, what are we doing to make sure that um, we have those opportunities? See, these were so important that I wrote note cards, and usually I don't have note cards. So I want you to know, now I've lost the one, one, one of the reasons. There's a reason you don't talk with note cards. So it talked about, um, again, the fact that uh, there is lendable money out there. Ah, here we go. It discussed the current assumption of the availability of banks' credit. Um, the, okay, let me start that again. Discussion of current assumption of the availability of banks' credit or lending to the private sector. One of the things that they have found when they started to look at the assumption a little differently is the economy has stabilized, and there is today very little evidence that there is a credit crunch, and it appears that there is growth in lending overall. So for you, looking to get into the business market, that means this is an exciting time. This is a time of opportunity. So I wanted to read to you, too, part of the stats that I found very, very impressive about Wells Fargo and our commitment to the communities and our commitment to small businesses and small business lending. Wells Fargo has loaned more dollars to small businesses than any other bank for nine consecutive years. And we remain committed to helping small businesses succeed financially. Now that's not a statistic that we put out, but that's based on a 2002 through 2011 Community Reinvestment Act government data. So for nine consecutive years, we have loaned more dollars to small businesses. Here in the Bay Area, we are the number one small business lender, as well as being the number one in the state of California. Last year, in just SBA 7A program loans, we financed over $117 million in the local San Francisco Bay region. Nationally, we have approved a record $1.24 billion in SBA loans for American <coughs> small businesses 
in the federal fiscal year of 2012. I have to say that again because I really like that. $1.24 billion. Wells Fargo has made $7.4 billion in net new loan commitments to small businesses across the U.S., primarily to businesses with annual revenues less than $20 million in the first half of 2012. $7.4 billion. That's about a 32% increase year over year from where we were at the end of June last year. Those are some pretty impressive numbers when you start to think about the assumption we all walk in with, there is no money, nobody is lending. How do I find it? What do I do? How do I move forward? You know, as impressive as those numbers are, to me what I found out when I was looking at that is, lending and having a local business banking presence is not the only way that Wells, Fonner, Wells Fargo honors our commitment to the small business community. Wells Fargo also supports other organizations like the VEDC, um, organizations that are helping self-employed, low to moderate income people start or expand their businesses. In the past decade alone, we have invested more than $51.6 million in 83 separate microfinance and small business lending organizations in communities across the country. So we want to make sure you understand Wells Fargo stands by the commitment to be here to help small businesses, to nationally help small businesses, but more importantly, to locally help small businesses. We want to thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today, to share with you some of our ideas, invite all of you to make sure that you look at an innovative, different way of banking. And personally, I would like to thank all of you for coming today and taking part of this great business growth opportunity. So thank you.